Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Golf 360 podcast. Whether you are a tech geek, you're a beginning coach, a top 100 coach, a beginning student, a tour level player, and, and or anybody in between, uh, I think you're really going to find today's show interesting, enlightening, uh, and any other thing that's going to help you improve your game, because uh, although this is a relatively new company uh, on the golf landscape, uh, and, a, and a piece of technology that that they came up with, uh, it is very quickly revolutionizing uh, how the game is being taught and in a very, very positive and productive way. Uh, and my guest today uh, is Reinhold Pirogs, and the company he works for uh, and represents is Hack Motion Golf. And Reinhold is the head of the golf division in their product development. And what Hack Motion does is they measure wrist angles throughout the swing. And for some of you who might not be aware, the important of wrist angles is it controls the club face. And as many of you are aware, or some of you might not be, uh, 80% of a golf ball's initial direction is determined by where the face is pointed. So prior to hack motion, there really wasn't an effective way to measure what the wrists and their angles were doing throughout the swing. And they identified that and developed this product. It's a very simple and easy to use product. Uh, They have uh, a couple different options, whether you are a avid golfer and you want to get it, uh, or whether you're a, a, a coach, uh, again, beginner, top 100, uh, whatever type of coach you are, uh, it is really very simple and easy to use. The data goes right to uh, an app, either on your phone or your pad, and uh, it gives you charts, it gives you uh, trackable data, uh, just about everything that you could possibly think of to really, really uh, see what needs attention uh, and how to get your game improved. So just a fascinating conversation with, with somebody who was uh, very, very involved in the product development. Uh, we talk, again, about all the things that Hack Motion does, but we also talk about how the company got developed, how they segued from the, their, the first identified industry that they wanted to go to and then made the transition into golf. Very interesting and cool conversation that Reinholds and I had. So uh, I think a lot of you across the spectrum of golf are going to really enjoy this one and appreciate it. And if you haven't checked out hack motion or heard of it, I highly, highly recommend you do so. And as we always do, we will have the link uh, to their website, uh, their, their contact info. If you want to reach out to them for the products, uh, we'll have a link to their uh, video uh, that describes what hack motion is. And of course, all their social media handles. So uh, sit back, relax, get your favorite adult beverage of choice, but first give a, Big, big Golf 360 welcome to my guest today, Hack Motion, Head of Product Development, Mr. Reinhold Pirox. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Golf 360 podcast. I'm the host, Pete Popovich. So you may be asking yourself, what is Golf 360? And Golf 360 is a show that was designed to introduce you to people associated with the game of golf to help you improve not only at your game, but also your life. Almost all of our guests are from within the industry in some way, shape, or form, but some of the guests we have are from outside the industry, and it mainly revolves around the business world with a few others scattered in here and there. Now, all of the guests that we have have a few things in common. One, they all were highly successful and accomplished in their field. Two, each has something to pass along that will help you in your game and your life. And three, they were all more than willing to give back by passing along the things that they use to help them in their career and even some of the mistakes that they made so that others don't make them in their journey. So I hope you find listening to them as enjoyable as I did interviewing them and that each and every one of you benefits from the information that they so willingly and graciously pass along. Hey everybody, I want to give a big shout out to a new sponsor of the Golf 360 podcast and that's Affinity Wealth Management Group. We all work exceptionally hard for our money and none of us can afford to let that uh, fall into the dark abyss of the big box financial service firm and their jack of all trades and master of none mantra, which basically means you become a number within a cookie cutter model that's also often accompanied by massive fees. Your future deserves more than average returns and little attention. At Affinity Wealth Management, they ensure that your financial goals receive highly individualized, tailored attention from experts, not just advisors, who are in the industry to be great and not average. As a client of Affinity Wealth, you receive a customized solution to your customized life, keeping in mind 
your family's financial situation, values, and risk tolerance. Call Affinity Wealth today for a no-cost consultation with one of their experts at 724-754-8200. Again, that's 724-754-8200. Or you can also check them out on the web at www.affinitywealthmg.com. That's A-F-F-I-N-I-T-Y-W-E-A-L-T-H-M-G. Com. This podcast is brought to you in part by Just Thrive Probiotic. You may be surprised to learn that your digestive system is the key to creating and maintaining the quality of your physical, mental, and emotional health, and it's one of the body's most essential systems. That's why the majority of nutritionists today highly recommend probiotics as an indispensable nutritional supplement. As a discriminating consumer, you've probably been searching for a probiotic that is proven, potent, and effective, and you found it. Just Thrive is your best choice for maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Just Thrive Probiotic captures the power of hundreds of thousands of years of nature's design with a specialized bacillus strain formulation that guarantees survivability through the stomach and upper digestive system. Supports optimum gut health, digestive health, immune health, and delivers antioxidants. Great for adults, kids, and the whole family. Use promo code GOLF360 at www.thriveprobiotic.com for 10% off your order. All right. Happy to be here with Hack Motion and Reinhold Pirogs. I say that right? Yeah. That's Got correct. that right? Okay. Um, and you are the, let's say, the uh, golf director for Hack Motion, um, which has a wide array, but you, you uh, focus, it seems like, on, on the golf uh, world. Um, you know, the, the first thing I want to ask you kind of is about the name. And, you know, hack in the golf world is maybe not the best word to use, but <laughs> um, is a, a, a visions that it generates or, or uh, with some people. Um, how did how did that name come about uh, in, uh, for the golf um, for a golf product? Yeah, so we actually uh, meant uh, it as a hack as a, being a shortcut to better mm-hmm. golf. So uh, we were actually, when we started, uh, we were thinking about uh, in general, helping people to learn uh, any type of motion uh, quicker and in a more fun way. So like as a shortcut to become a better, you know, golfer or baseball player. So then uh, in a hacker culture uh, or, or in the culture where you are more doing things, let's say um, uh, just getting as a shortcut to something, then that name came. And it was actually funny that we got so much feedback because we are not native uh, English speakers. Uh, We're based in Europe. So uh, we got all these uh, questions about why would I want to be a hacker on a golf course? And then then, then it kind of uh, dawned upon us that it's a kind of funny name, but it has uh, uh, actually worked well because I think it's uh, really memorable uh, and uh, people really uh, remember it well. So it, 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 with a very, I'm assuming to, to come up with a product like this, and, and we'll get into it for, for those of you that don't know what, what hack motion is, it's a, it's a, would you call it a, let's say it's a training device. Uh, yeah. It's people. like a sensor, uh, golf, uh, swing analyzer and a training tool. Yeah. So for everyone that, that might not know, but you're, you're in the golf or you knew the podcast, well, we're going to get into the whole story and, and the product and development and what it does and why you should have it and everything else. But uh, coming, I'm, I'm assuming you guys have a very strong technical background and it makes sense where you're, you're talking about hacking into a system or, or hacking a system to make something more efficient, better, everything else. And, <laughs> and didn't fully in the beginning, understand the, 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 the application to golf, but it, it, now that you kind of, that, that was a little, maybe speed bump. It, it I guess people could kind of look back and make fun of it. And, uh, maybe something funny comes of it as you go forward. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Somewhere recommending definitely change it to tour motion or something like that, not hack motion. But uh, the 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 name we kept the name and it's it's worked well for us. Cool. Uh, you know, speaking on the golf world, have you are you follow golf a lot uh, on the on the tours around the world, in particular the PGA Tour? Of what's what's going on out there? Not just from the players' standpoint, who wins or who loses, but some of the the things that happen in and around in uh, the, the game? Well, we're mostly focused, of course, on uh, the technique uh, of, of players, uh, but uh, uh, 
uh, we, we do, of course, follow, but uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm actually, I, I'm so busy working that I don't have much time to watch TV or, 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 or read the news. I really, at, currently, at a very uh, busy time uh, for the company trying to develop uh, new products for golfers. So mm-hmm. I, I would li- I probably hope to have more time to uh, follow the PGA Tour in, in the future. Well, I'm sure you're going to follow the Ryder Cup coming up in a few weeks. Yeah, so. oh, that, that's, that, that's for sure. That, uh, I'll watch that for sure. Are, 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 it, it, I, Europe would have to be salivating at the fact that the U.S. team doesn't look like they have much chemistry in the way that Europe always seems to, regardless, whoever's on the team just seems to have this gel uh, that a lot of people think is their uh, extra, th- let's say, 13th man. Uh, and go- going in, especially with the, the Kepka, the shambo and, and the whole thing now it, it's just like god how are these guys going to pull their shit together to to make this exciting because you guys have been kicking everybody's ass the last what last three i don't even think it's been close yeah definitely uh, that's something that uh, european players even though they might not seem so sometimes high on the rankings they they get this extra uh, advantage but uh, i think you can never really underestimate the, the us team they have uh, such great players i would I, i'm always uh, kind of uh, careful with uh, being overconfident and it's better to be confident when you actually get the win it, yeah it seems that, that the europeans have a very good uh, culture and, and that's very important it seems like in today's world whether it's a a rider cup or a a, a company um, and, and you guys have that. I mean, you wouldn't got to where you are without it. Um, but so at, at one, I want to get into the, to the product itself. I know people are probably saying, okay, not enough with the small talk, but what the hell is hack motion? So as golfers play and anyone who's played for any amount of time, understand that there is, that there's ups and downs and there's, there's challenges and, and all those things struggles. And then you, then you succeed. Um, so kind of tell us how you guys came up with the idea for hack motion um, and, and basically what is it? Uh, so it's uh, basically a wrist sensor that you wear on your lead wrist and it measures everything that you're doing with your hands and uh, your wrists throughout the swing. And it provides you precise data on uh, how much you were, say, uh, cupping or wrist at each moment and it helps you to see what the pros are doing and what you are doing and uh, basically learn club face control by controlling your what your wrists are doing because you directly control your uh, club face with your hand and your wrist so and uh, just to go kind of uh, how we came uh, up with the concept is that um, one of our founders at this is uh, actually has a phd in um, uh, electronics so he did his uh, PhD on exactly the sensor systems uh, and how you can track body movements. And then uh, he wanted to create uh, a system that would be helping to learn any type of motion. And he's actually himself doing snowboarding. So uh, the first first idea was let's build uh, something for snowboarders to uh, like a, a learn better movement by getting kind of audio feedback on whether let's say you no. Know, uh, you need to uh, turn more or turn your shoulders and uh, make a full body costume for snowboarders. And uh, that actually uh, didn't go that well because uh, unfortunately snowboarders are not really into uh, like buying a lot of uh, uh, and then and, and, and using this type of coaching. Like there's just not that much demand for it. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, what really worked well is that uh, golfers, uh, if you look at them, uh, then uh, like I, I would go, go to my coach and I would have a chance to, you know, work with uh, TrackMan and uh, other type of uh, systems that are, you know, costing tens of thousands and maybe some NBA players don't have access uh, to uh, uh, in a day-to-day kind of uh, when they're working on their uh, technique uh, shooting uh, that uh, like average uh, golfer might have and that golf is super advanced uh, for tech- uh, in, in the technology sphere. And uh, then it was kind of clear that you shouldn't, uh, that it's something that um, th- there's kind of a niche for that there's nobody who's doing really good work on specifically what the hands and the wrists are doing. There's like mm-hmm. all these full body costumes, but they are very cumbersome to put on. They like waste a lot of time. And that's why actually most uh, 
coaches or players probably don't use them in day-to-day lessons because you don't want to be uh, spending, you know, uh, a few minutes in the beginning, setting up, uh, calibrating. And often the data is quite uh, complicated. Uh, and uh, that's why we kind of came up with the idea that, hey, let's just focus on one part of the body. That's the wrist that is controlling the club face. And that's what also the coaches uh, were saying that they would be really interested and there's no easy tool to do it. And then, uh, uh, then we created the product and it was actually went really well already from the very beginning we got really a lot of positive feedback that it's something unique and something that uh, like it provides information that the coaches are not able to uh, access uh, normally and then uh, working more and more with uh, coaches and uh, more and more players actually started buying it because they also want to you know get access to the same type of uh, technology the coaches have because like there are, you know, uh, so many players who have uh, their home studios and they really invest in their game and they want to be uh, as, as best as they can be and uh, practice in the winter, work on their technique. And uh, we've been growing uh, that way. So, yeah, it, it started from just the goal of building something that'd be helpful to learn any type of motion. And that's our uh, you know, goal that any basically all type of motion learning is moving more and more uh, towards you that you are able to measure your motion and you're able to get quick feedback. And mm-hmm. we see that as the future and golf is a uh, uh, kind of perfect uh, sport to start with because uh, coaches and players are uh, already very much uh, excited about ability to measure precisely what's happening, get feedback and they, they love using it. What was the, how did let me rephrase it how, how did you go from or, or go from maybe a full body capture in, in snowboarding to focusing on on the hands and the wrists and let's even uh the forearms to, to the lesser extent in the golf swing like like you, you mentioned that that you didn't want to go full body because that, that's where most of the the golf measurement went but then that was going to get uh financially burdened to, to too many so w- what was the process on how you guys selected the hands and the wrist uh, it was really looking at what is currently not measured and what's important and speaking to coaches, like what would you want to measure, right? And we had a lot of interviews, like that's number one thing that when you're developing product, you should basically just listen to what your uh, customer is saying, what, what are the you know pain points, what they want to see. And for us, uh, we just understood that uh, risk is something that uh, coaches are not able currently to measure and it's super important. And, uh, and then that's how we kind of decided that it's also much easier because of, of course, a full body costume is, uh, way, way more harder. To right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you see, uh, like t- Tiger Woods when they were doing the uh, video games and he'd have the full suit on with all the sensors all over my, could you imagine putting something like that on a driving range and, or, or, yeah, or exactly. somebody comes in for a lesson and it's this, uh, elderly we'll say or or we'll say experienced person um and they come in and they may, maybe don't have the muscle mass that they used to have and, and just say hey by the way go put this full body suit on with all these sensors and we're gonna we're gonna go through your lesson today it's like they look at you yeah like, exactly crazy. i remember actually myself my lessons that i went to a uh, kind of a camp in spain and uh, uh there was a gear system and it's it's amazing what you can measure with it but every lesson started with, okay, let's uh, put it on. Uh, you're doing first, I know uh, how many, like five, 10 minutes, doing everything, setting up, putting everything on, and you're taking some swings and then you, you're looking at the data. And honestly, the coach gets a lot of value of it, uh, uh, seeing the data, but for the student, it's often very hard because there's just so many numbers that he doesn't know what exactly to focus on. And, uh, and, and, and I often felt that maybe the lesson, I, I would benefit more uh, sometimes just uh, having less data and ma- making more swings and seeing how it changes and like finding what works for me uh, rather than maybe getting 100 data points at, uh, during the lesson and uh, not being so clear. So what exactly I achieved during that lesson. Would you say that the technology in, in today's world, and in particular the golf world, and, and your guys in, uh, being a prime example that would, and as you alluded to, would show that, okay, it can show you here's where you are, 
And here's where you need to go. It's not going to necessarily say, well, do A, B, and C, and you'll get there. But at least it gives you a direction so that you're not just out there trial and error. Um, some coaches might be able to give you that direction. Some players, and, and actually some coaches have the, the theory that you have to allow the student to develop. You just have to kind of get them going. Um, would you say that, that that's a large portion of, of what, you, what hack motion does for people, in, in particular how the wrists and hands work? Yeah, actually, the number number one thing I think a, when player puts on hack motion, he just gets awareness of what his wrists are doing and what how the club face is responding. That's like number one that we have this uh, like live three D view mm-hmm. of the hand, and just uh, when uh, a player sees and the coach says, "Okay, do more of this and that," and he sees how the numbers are changing, he gets awareness of that body part, which honestly. I think most like golf swing things are just automatically what you have, uh, you know, you have this muscle memory and you don't necessarily think about what your wrists are doing and what the club face is doing. So number one thing is just getting, okay, awareness. Okay. This is what I do with the wrist. And this is how club face responds. Just basic theory. Like this opens the club face, this closes the club face. And then the coach can say, okay, you have currently, you know, your club face is way too open. And that's why it's so hard for you to get a consistent impact uh, because you just have to, you know, uh, try to uh, save it and uh, close it at the last, uh, you know, fraction of a second. And then you look at, okay, this, look at these uh, pro patterns. And what they are doing is they, first of all, don't get to such an open uh, position of the club face, like they control the wrist better. And uh, then they gradually square it, uh, the club face. And I want you to be from, let's say you give a number, like you're at 50 now, your club, your, your wrists are extended 50 degrees. And this pro is like 20. And then you can see that, did you manage to get during that lesson uh, closer to that, uh, let's say 20 degrees that the pro, uh, the pro is in. Mm-hmm. And maybe you didn't get all the way there, but you already can see the progress and you're aware, okay, this is my issue. You know, this is my benchmark for what I need to achieve. And you can, you know, see from lesson to lesson how, how, how much you're progressing. So I think that's one of the really key things that coaches and players really like about it. Yeah. And, and you know, what happens is when you usually bring out technology to a lesson and, and somebody's, you start explaining it to, to a student and in their eyes, you can almost see it. They start to gloss over and that it might be above their head even though you've broken it down to a very simplistic explanation, but, and then the response you usually get is, well, I'm a field player. And it's like, okay, what, but what is feel, right? I mean, you, you, well, you would, first of all, you wouldn't be here if your feel was correct. So, yeah. so we know that that's wrong. Uh, so let, let's start there. But uh, the, the, the divide, the hack motion allows a coach to help a student better understand the feel of where they are and then the feel that they need to get to. Is that a, that a fair assessment? Yeah, exactly. And I, I mean, I, I know this, like the theory really well, like feel ain't real. And, and, and mm-hmm. but still every time I get into the position that I actually need to be, and I know that like the data shows that what I should be doing, if I want to get, it's always so, we feel so weird and awkward. And it's so hard to, you know, make your brain believe in this uh, exaggeration that you need to do to, to make the change. And you do it like for years and you still feel so weird doing it. And, and it's, it's, I think the data really doesn't allow you to kind of lie to yourself in a sense that, okay, I'm, I'm doing it. The data will show if you're doing it. Like it's same with the path, you know, sometimes like you might uh, swing out to in and uh, it just shows that you're still, you know, 10 degrees out to in and, and there's no arguing with that, uh, even though you feel that you are already doing it enough, uh, so, so it just after each swing, if you get that, let's say path date from TrackMan, you can just uh, know if you're on the right path or not, but you can just waste, you know, hours and hours in the driving range thinking you're doing right thing mm-hmm. and kind of uh, hitting that shot and feeling maybe even good. Like maybe it's even flying. Okay. But you're still uh, not kind of working on the, and fixing the thing that you should be uh, fixing, which it might be your path, maybe your face. But uh, it just tells you the truth, whether you're on the right path or not. Do, do, do you think that the advancement of technology, in particular as it re- relates to golf, you, you hack motion, uh, track man, flight scope, force plates, the, the, the whole array? I mean, for anyone out there who's going to get mad at me for getting their 
technological advancement. I'm sorry, it's not a disrespectful. I just can't think of all of them right now. But would you think that with the the wear and tear, especially as golfers advance, right, that they go from beginner to decent to weekend hacker to single digit scratch, some that pursue college and then pro in the amount of time and practice and everything else and the wear and tear on the body, especially as it's not really the spine in particular is not really built for the coiling and the torques and everything. Do do you think that the technology can allow players to practice and improve without the repetitive motion of trial and error and that they, they can, they can have the measurement, they can have the feedback, they can say, okay, here's what I need to do without just, as you mentioned, going out there thinking they're doing it, then they go play a tournament and they play horrible. And then they got to go back and say, okay, here's what I need to fix. I got to do it more and more and more and more where the, 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 the product can help them go right to what they need to, and at least they can develop it faster without wearing themselves out as much. Would you say that that might be an ancillary benefit? Yeah, definitely. And uh, it's it just the simple benefit of yeah catching yourself uh, quicker when you're doing uh, maybe the wrong thing, like same mm-hmm. as might be just filming yourself on the driving range like am i do i still have that inside takeaway and it just you might like you might think you are doing it right but you're really not like you have to weigh exaggerate it and if you can cut that feedback loop to maybe you know uh practicing then going to a, another lesson or asking your friend uh uh is this better or not but like after each swing you get precise feedback that's just huge cutting uh shorter the uh the, the feedback loop and that definitely helps you to also you know decrease uh, the wear and tear on your body if you're you don't need to maybe uh, hit that many shots to get to the same uh, goal right I, I guess I, I started equating it uh, to my students the, the same way my dentist told me and that I, I go in there and I said look I, you know I haven't been to a dentist in 20 years and I don't have a cavity why should I see you guys twice a year why can't we do once and he just looked at me very plainly and said well it's just maintenance It's preventative care. You don't want something to fester and get bad. And, and I, I think that's a thing I see in golf as well is that people will only come to you once they're hitting it bad, right? They, they don't, they don't want to come once a month or, you know, once they're at a level or that they've achieved a level they want to, they, they, they want to come once every quarter or once every six months, only when their game has gotten to a point where it's, it's, it's horrendously bad for their level. And it's like, okay, now we've got to, dig you out of this hole that you stuck yourself in or, or fill this hole in that, that you dug for months and months and months. If you would have come sooner, we could have got you out. And I think that the, as I've learned more about all the technology the last number of years, it, it, it's like, Hey, we can do this and we can pinpoint what's wrong much sooner so that you don't go down the wrong road and then have to waste all the time getting yourself back on track and then get you going in the right direction. Um, and I was a late, late comer to the technological world. I mean, maybe I'm just, uh, too classic or maybe I'm too old set in my ways, but um, I, I have changed my perspective and opinion on the, these things. If I, as I watch them and interviewed people like Scott Cox, who's one of your ambassadors and Martin Ch- uh, Chuck and, and others uh, it, it's great stuff. And I, I just wish more people would uh, come to it, s- see the light, so to speak. Um, so you, you talked about how you guys went from, from snowboarding into the in interviewing uh, some coaches to find out where, where to, to go in particular, as far as people on your staff or within your company, w- was there anybody that was either uh, a hand and wrist specialist, maybe from the medical side of the, of the industry to, or a biomechanics specialist to, to say, Hey, he, here's what the science says wrists need to do, but how does that relate to particular individuals to where if one person who is built, a certain way. And then the, the technology says they need to move this way. They could, that might have a potential to, to do some damage. Um, and I guess I would reference someone like uh, the, I think it's biodynamic system that Mike Adams and Terry rolls and EA Tischler use to where it's, they go through a measurement process on, on how you should have your lead hand on the club. So should it be neutral? Should it be somewhat strong? Should it be really strong? How should the trail hand go on? And then obviously that's going to affect how the wrist move in the swing. Um, so I guess it, it, was there anybody that, that was giving medical input as far as the, the functionality uh, of the hands and the wrists and how they move while, well, while the product was being developed? We, we were, um, actually we, we checked the basics, but, 
uh, what we did is we didn't necessarily immediately say how your wrists should be moving. We more uh, created a tool and they gave it to the experts who are those uh, coaches uh, like Scott Cowks, who actually a lot of them are really qualified also in, uh, in, in how the body moves mm -hmm. and uh, in, in uh, biomechanics. And then uh, they actually are the ones that uh, uh, create the theory uh, of what the good players are doing and what the poor player is doing because they have all the experience. So we, uh, instead of uh, coming from you know, top down saying, okay, this is how the, uh, we, we've talked to a lot of people and uh, this is how, what you should be doing. We like gathered a lot of data and so, so what type of patterns we see for uh, more successful players and less, less successful players and what the coaches are already teaching because there's tremendous amount of knowledge out there uh, that uh, the coaches have. And uh, we're more based on that. Uh, what are our insights uh, about the swing? Mm -hmm. it, 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 I think, I can't remember who was on the show. If it, if it was Dr. Scott Lynn or Dr. Paul Wood, I can't remember. Maybe it was Doc Sasho, one of them. But we're, we're discussing how, let's say, 10 to 15 years ago, when I think Tr TrackMan was really the, the first big one to, to jump on the scene. And it was like, okay, now after seven to 10 years and longer, they have this enormous amount of data. And, and then you, you take the, the, the force plates and, and the hack motion. And as, you, as all of you gather this data, uh, I think, I think it was Dr. Scott Lynn. It was like, okay, now we're getting into the realm of application for particular individuals, because in, I think in the early days where some of the technology got a bad rap was some coaches or instructors were just lumping people into to general categories that didn't necessarily apply. Right. And, and, and that might've got some negativity because the people maybe digressed instead of improved. And then they're like, well, that either that coach doesn't know what they're doing or that technology doesn't work. And, and maybe that gave a, a, a false black eye to in the beginning. I, I think obviously the technology has proven it's worth. Um, but th that, that, that was kind of where that question came from. And, and I would, yeah, we were actually very careful not to give us kind of any kind of scores about what's good or what's bad, but initially just provide the data. So mm -hmm. we, 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 we felt that a lot of uh, maybe golf technology also has not succeeded because it gives you kind of a score, like 90% uh, perfect. And then, you know, you hit a big slice and uh, you, or, or it says like you have to move in this way, but you obviously see that different players uh, move, uh, still achieve great results uh, by having different uh, patterns. So we just said, okay, we're not, not, not kind of starting from the position where we're already telling you exactly what to do. But we're just starting, okay, here's, here's the data and let's see what, what, what you find, uh, what the good and the bad players are doing. And then based on that, we just actually understood really certain parts of the swing that are really more important and uh, certain wrist uh, metrics that are more important. In this case, it's flexion extension and opening and closing the club face. And the club face control is really the big thing that uh, most players can uh, benefit from. And it just can naturally evolve by giving all the metrics and seeing what coaches and players find the most valuable, where's the you know, biggest pull. And uh, instead of you know, sitting uh, down and writing everything out, what we expect to see, and then giving immediately, uh, we, we spend some time. And then based on that, we've seen what are the patterns that the good players doing, and then uh, it's much easier. And we are still not very uh, saying that we, all the players move in the same way, and this is the only way you can move, but we see, okay, these players on average are more successful and better, so you, you're probably a good, uh, good idea of copying what they are doing. And there's always some kind of exceptions like you know phil mickelson or something like that uh, uh would do it differently but you know average players not phil mickelson they don't practice that much so right they, you, they don't have know. his yeah his god-given ability either I mean, exactly. he's an outlier so, right yeah you, you don't say you can always point to an outlier and uh and and or, or even let's say dustin johnson you, you know mm -hmm. um they do certain things a certain way and they work and we can explain what they do. And uh, we can also say what you as an average player who maybe doesn't have that, uh, you know, rotation of ability and flexibility and strength, what you should be doing, what that pattern might be more suitable to you. 
Yeah, and we'll get into uh, in a little bit uh, the, the, the different patterns. Uh, and Scott and I talked about a little bit, and I'll let you talk about the technological side uh, as we kind of progress in, into that um, segment. But if anybody gets on your website, and of course, I'll have it in, linked in, in the, the summary in, in the description. Um, but you guys have a number of videos on there. And for anybody that, that wants to learn just the basics of hack motion, uh, it's uh, hackmotion.com. Uh, go check that out. If you're listening to this, you hit pause and go, go watch some of the videos, but uh, it, it gets, it get, wants to put people in a range as you alluded to You're not going to say, Hey, you need to be in this position. If you want to hit the ball, but it gives a range if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. is, is that correct? Yeah. So what, what we find is that, uh, so first of all, there are different patterns. So, uh, like guys are quite different, uh, like, you know, Dustin Johnson or Henrik Stenson at the top of their swings, they would have, you know, Henrik Stenson be like uh, plus 50 degrees, like kind of cupped or uh, extended. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Dustin Johnson might be, I think something like 40 something degrees flexed or also called bowed at the top. But, and th those are different patterns, how, how, how they swing the club. Uh, but uh, what we say is that probably uh, you, you're much better at uh, kind of having a swing that is more, if you probably can't rotate that as well as uh, Dustin Johnson, like not, most uh, players uh, can't. And then we say that number one thing that you should be doing is try to control your extension flexion from your address to the top. So don't let it really increase and keep it in a certain range. And we look at what the, you know, uh, the tour players that we measured, they uh, what range they keep it in, and they keep it uh, the, the kind of range usually is say, from slightly more extended at the top they were at address to a, a bit more bowed or flexed at the top. Mm -hmm. Actually, to clarify maybe it, I'm, I'm using these terms that may, may, may be not clear for everybody, uh, so I'll just uh, take a step back. So what we call uh, most important probably metric is uh, extension. Or cupping, so that's if you imagine you place your uh, 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 arm flat in front of you, and you kind of put the uh, palm upwards. That is uh, extension or cupping of the yeah, wrist, wh wh where the back of the hand is moving closer to the forearm. Yeah, exactly, right. and uh, th that's a popular golf term. And then if you move it downwards, uh, then it's called bowing, or what we call it flexion. So. Uh, 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 simple once you know the terminology and basically uh most good players are somewhere uh close to where they, they were at the address or slightly uh more uh bowed or flexed at the top so they maintain it or slightly close the club face because when you cup the wrist it opens the club face and when you bow it it closes the club face have you guys found with all the data you collected that that the majority of of uh Club face to path issues come from a, a cupped wrist or a, a bowed, uh, not, I'm sorry, a, a cupped wrist or an extended wrist. Uh, yeah, so the, definitely a lot of like, it's a, a tendency that, you know, uh, players they're trying to, uh, they maybe can't uh, swing that far back, then they try to, you know, uh, hinge the wrists more, uh, which often is actually. Uh, you, you think you're going to get more lag if you just really, really, really hinge the wrist. But actually, it's interesting that uh, the wrist, uh, when you hinge it, it also opens the club face because mm -hmm. it's anatomically, let's say, coupled. Uh, it increases your cupping of the wrist if you hinge it more. So, so when, when can you just, so for the people out there, because you and I are obviously on a video call, and I, I, hopefully I can get this onto YouTube, but but for those who are listening and maybe driving in a car, can you explain hinging a little bit? Would, would that yeah, be the, so, the radial uh, deviation, the up and down? So, yeah, so that is the radial ulnar deviation. We, so, I mean, the popular term is hinging or cocking your wrist. Yes. Uh, but uh, uh, basically, it's if you move up, it's radial uh, on, and hinging, and then unhinging or ulnar is downwards. So, uh, so, so as I'm but, watching you, if for, for the person in, is sitting in their car or maybe they're putting on the green listening. Uh, one of them would be where you're, you're, let's say you hold, like you're going to shake somebody's hand and you're going to move your thumb closer to your forearm, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the bone there, that, that would be one, that would be your hinging or your 
cocking. Yeah. And then if you moved your little finger closer to the underside mm -hmm. uh, of, of your forearm, that, that would be the uncocking, right? So yeah. as, as I'm watching you do it, I'm trying to think of ways for people who can't see you to, to have a better understanding. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, uh, and when you try to move it as much as you can upwards, so you trying to load it and get as much lag as you can, uh, then actually you also have a tendency to increase the extension or cupping of the wrist, which opens mm -hmm. the club face. So players who really try to, you know, maximize that and load it really much, then they have a often open club face issue. And then what's typically happening is they do a pulling of the hands uh, down to start the swing. And then they just get in a really bad position with an open club face uh, mid downswing, and then they have to, you know, try to save it uh, by early extension and swinging out to in, and that results in a typical slice pattern. So that's number one, probably thing that we see is just open club face, and then trying to square it at the last moment with all kind of compensation and actually losing all the lag. So I think athletic motion golf guys they made a nice video on uh, YouTube. You can find it with a hack motion sensor explaining how you know uh, you try to get more lag uh, by hinging this, but you actually lose it uh, midway down because you just uh, your body naturally has to find the way how to square it at the last moment by you know removing it and you you, you lose the lag that you try to get so hard. You know, it's interesting that, that you guys, it, it, as you talk to. There, I have the ability to talk to people who are doing all this research and development and, and creating these things like you guys are. Um, and, and when you come up with a, a, a summary or, or synopsis of your findings, it, it, and as I alluded to, the, the range uh, in, your, in the videos on your website, like, okay, you want it. And, and you, you can set that range, can't you? The coaches can set the range for the student. Like you can have a 10 degree variable in your extension deflection. Right? Yeah, exactly. You so, so, I had uh, John Sinclair on the show and, and John's a top hundred coach out of Texas. And, and he's done a lot of research. I think he has 160 tour pros in his database on, on their wrist positions. And I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think it, he had something or said something like the position at the top, that there's a variance of about 120 degrees across the spectrum. So it, it's amazing that, that you have world-class players who are across the board from Full, like a Freddie Couples who's at the top and, and has a full extended wrist. And then, like you said, Dustin Johnson, who's got a 40 degree flex in his wrist. But the, the thing in common uh, is all of them go into flexion earlier in the downswing, almost from in the transition. And the, the, the better players do. And the players who struggle more try to, to save that coming closer to impact. Yeah, ex exactly. So you look at different positions at the top, but when they reach uh, some something around P6, uh, shaft parallel uh, before impact, they're actually in a quite similar position, even though they were in a, a very different position at the top. And uh, the, they close the club face or square the different uh, maybe moments, some earlier, some later, but they do it uh, in a in a kind of predictable, consistent way. And uh, usually more consistent players are those that uh, square it uh, earlier. And, 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 and people, amateurs just uh, square it late and they, they have to make so many compensations to, you know, uh, and they're nowhere near a good position uh, around P6 or Lash Apparel as the pros are. Yeah, and it's like you explained to a higher handicap. It's like, look, you have some of the best athletes gravitating towards golf and, and playing on, on professional tours. Uh, DeChambeau, Dustin Johnson, Kepka. I mean, all these guys could have played very high levels uh, other sports and, and eye hand coordination is phenomenal. And, and not to leave the, the ladies out. I'm just not as familiar with the ladies game um, to, to rip off their names, but you tell it a, a high handicap. You're like, look, if these players are practicing every day, their eye hand coordination and their timing is second to none why would you think that you could play consistent golf when you're trying to time your release when they get their release set almost as soon as possible as they go from the top of the backswing to, to halfway down? It's like, <laughs> and they give you this look like, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> and it's like, okay, that's why we have to move in this direction and not that direction. Um, but it, it, and it's a, again, it goes back to you guys are providing that data and, and illustration. So in your system, so, 
let, let's talk about the product itself and, and everything involved, like the, the process. So speak to, to what the product is, because it's very simple and easy to use, but then as it integrates to, to somebody's iPad that, that will illustrate what the, the wrists are doing through the swing so that the, the student and the coach can understand it together so that they have a feedback, they have a visual, and then they have a, a physical that, that, that can help them learn faster. Yeah, it's actually super simple. It's basically a sensor uh, hardware that you put on your wrist. It's like a wristwatch. Mm -hmm. And there's a little extra sensor that goes on top of your palm. And the setup is really like putting on a wristwatch. We really work hard on it. It takes like 10 seconds and you're ready to go. So it's not very, very easy. And then you just uh, have a iOS app on your iPhone, iPad, or a Windows uh, computer or uh, tablet. And the moment you turn on the sensor and you have the uh, app open, they automatically pair. And it starts, when you start a session, it automatically starts tracking whatever your wrist is doing. And then you just do a very simple calibration. It's two steps. You say what's a flat wrist and what's an extended wrist and how it makes that extension motion. And then uh, when you take a swing, it just immediately captures it. There's a algorithm that tracks uh, through, throughout. So you don't have to like, you know, press record and mm -hmm. then stop. You just, you know, same as a launch monitor, you just take a swing and it uh, gets captured and then you get all the data and there are different modes that you can uh, look at it. And uh, I think the coolest mode probably that uh, we, we just released is the one that really uh, just measures immediately what you did with your flexion extension and uh, how much you changed it from position to position and gives you a range whether wh where, like let's say most uh, good players would be and says whether you are in inside that range or out, uh, slightly above it or below it. And then you can just uh, work with the feedback, which is um, audio feedback that you set based on your position. Let's say typically a player might like a typical player has way too much extension or cupping, right? Let's say mm -hmm. uh, he's open club face and you just say, I want you know 20 degrees less of that. So you just put in that range in the app. And if you get in the correct range, it just plays a sound. And then you know, you know I'm, I'm getting in the right position. And the, the, that's really great feedback of getting what's the feel you know, I need to, to make that uh, correct motion. And then you... Work, work with that, uh, take swing after swing, get immediate data and just see if you're like, am I getting better or not? So, so it's like a trifecta of feedback, right? So you got the auditory where, where the, it, it dings or, or lets you know yeah. that you're doing it. You're within your range. It has, then they, they can see it on the screen and then you also have it on your hand. So you, you have some sort of feedback there. So you, you guys are capturing, uh, a lot of ways that people are going to learn and, and process that information. And so you can check all the boxes and say, yep, doesn't matter what, how you learn it. We've got you covered. Yeah. It's, it's uh, the, the audio feedback is something that, yeah, it's uh, very easy to just, uh, it's again, this truth, whether you're in that position or not. And uh, it's just very hard. Uh, like if you, you know, to get to the top and know, okay, am I a bit too bowed or a bit too, you know, uh, cupped? And it just tells you exactly uh, what, what what you have to do. So, have, have some of your really helpful. Have, have some of the ambassadors, like the guys who are using this a lot, like Scott and uh, Brian Manzel, I think is another one that uses it quite a bit. Uh, have there been any feedback where they'll take, say, somebody who's very cupped at the top, and then they'll, they'll slowly work them to say that they'll get it ten degrees closer to flexion, and then. Once they get there, they can take them maybe another 10 degrees more inflection. Has there been uh, anyone that, that, that has tracked that to where let's say that they've taken somebody from a 40 degrees of extension to a 15 degrees of flexion throughout the swing? Where, where, given that they're working with a range, they can continually improve that range until that they get to a desired spot. And then even with your ability to measure, they say, okay, maybe we went too far. We need to go back here because this is when you were hitting it really good. Yeah, de definitely. You uh, uh, what, what coaches do often is they you benchmark the player initially, so and then you uh, see when he's hitting best. And sometimes, actually, Scott uh, Kauks uh, has has mentioned that he 
uh, sometimes even takes his tour players and just sees, okay, when they're hitting really good, what they're doing with their wrists. And when they're suddenly, let's say a week later, they're struggling, they say, okay, let's, let's put it on and see what, what are you doing different and how has your release changed? And you can see those uh, uh, slight changes and, and uh, players actually like working it with themselves afterwards when they get, uh, you know, the feel. Uh, Hugh Marr is uh, another great coach in Europe uh, who's coaching like Ryder Cup player, actually, um, Torbjorn Olsson. And uh, he said that Torbjorn just li- loves, uh, you know, he, he gets told what parameters he should have and he doesn't have to worry about other things. He can just, you know, um, uh, work with the sensor and uh, on his own, you know, uh, traveling the tour and uh, the coach can just tell, okay, like work on the, at the top being, you know, maybe a bit more flat and, and you just set the parameters and the sensor gives you feedback and the progress is going to be really fast because if you have this continuous loop of uh, feedback, then, you know, each shot is bringing you hopefully closer to, 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 to correct position. You know, that's interesting that, that you bring that up. I, I, I'm a big documentary guy. I, mean, I can't stand watching television with all the crazy shit they have on in the world now and, and news in particular. I mean, I, I went from not watching really any shows. OK, let me just keep a glimpse on the news to see what's happening in the world. And now it's like that. That's so ridiculously uh, biased. And you're like, OK, this is a waste of my time. Uh, so I, I've been a big documentary fan for a long time. And, and one I watched recently was called In Search of Greatness. It was on Amazon Prime. And it, it talked to like they had Wayne Gretzky, they had Muhammad Ali uh, and, and probably Gretzky was on the most. And he spoke to how he, he, his development as a player to where being slight build, you know, not, not a muscle guy, not the strongest, not the fastest, but developing how not to get his ass kicked. <laughs> right. Especially in a game like hockey. Um, he developed that from the time he was a kid. And then when he went to the pros, he was 17 and obviously a 17 year old kid who's playing against men who are 25 to 35. He's got to, he's got to continue that development on how he can survive. Um, and, and as you, and as I relate that to what you said about Thorborn and his coach, where he's told, okay, here's where you need to get to. Here's a device. Go, go ahead and play with it. The whole idea that, that Gretzky was trying to get across was, Kids in particular, but people in general will learn something if you kind of just give them an idea and say, take this and go with it. And, and even more so if you say, here's where you need to get to, go ahead and find your way, right? Like ki- kids, little kids will learn five languages. You don't have to teach it to them. Um, but, but kids are also very inquisitive. They'll go do things. They're not afraid to mess up. I think as we get older, you know, that image of, oh my God, somebody's watching me. I might screw up. It's like, you're not that important. Nobody's watching you that much. Um, but that, that's very cool how, you, how coaches are giving the, the, the players and the students, here's where you need to go. Go ahead and play with it. And you, you will teach yourself and learn much faster than me sitting there on every swing and saying, nope, got to go two degrees more this way. Nope, got to go four degrees more this way. All that does is lock up their brain, right? Uh, at least the experimentation and you guys providing the tool to do so is, seems to be working some wonders because there's, I mean, the scores are coming down. They're not coming down because guys are just getting lucky or girls are just getting lucky. Yeah, yeah, for, for, for sure. Uh, and a lot of uh, students actually, they feel it and they get it themselves uh, after the lesson. They just say, oh, this is awesome. I can just uh, work on, on, uh, with it on my own. So uh, once you get the correct feel, then, uh, then, then, then it's really just a matter of repeating it uh, and, and then you know, continuously getting in that correct range. Can, can, can you speak a little bit to, to the, the growth and the let's say growing pains from, from the beginning in, in, so you guys identified that the golfing world, uh, nobody was really measuring the, the risks. Um, what, what was it that you guys hit the lottery and that, that the first, uh, prototype you came up with worked perfect. And then you guys just took off from there or was there some modification that was needed? And if so, what was it without maybe giving away any trade secrets to your competitors? I'm <laughs> not here to, to steal anything, but what, what, what you can speak to, can you just tell a little bit of that story? Well, obviously we improved uh, and added features. For instance, uh, we started with uh, uh, not that much, uh, not like a full set of data we have currently. We didn't have data for putting, for instance, and then a lot of uh, coaches who were asking, hey, can we use this uh, for putting? And then we added putting. 
And uh, actually, we, we just really, when we released it, we really tried to carefully listen to what our uh, uh, users are asking for. So they asked for, uh, number one thing actually was we had the Windows software initially, and then they said, hey, like I want to use it on a driving range. I want to use it on a, on a course uh, uh, outside my studio. So we, we made the uh, iOS app. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like I think 90% of our users are now iOS users, which is obvious. Everybody wants to use uh, mobile. And so it's, it's surprising that some of the systems uh, don't, don't have mobile apps yet. And uh, then, uh, then uh, we had the putting. A lot of coaches were asking, hey, like my students are struggling with the yips and uh, uh, I, I want to see what their wrists are doing. And uh, uh, David Orr is uh, one coach that was an early adopter. He's done a a great education seminar. So he, he, he is really a big fan of uh, uh, hack motion, understanding how exactly you are controlling also the club face with your changing or wrist angles and what you're doing. And uh, th th that was a big thing. Um, the big struggles initially also getting the data just from the players. So uh, the, the, the coaches uh, that are coaching tour players, they were uh, sending us... Uh, uh, sometimes anonymous data, uh, just uh, showing, you know, uh, okay, this is my player, this is what we're doing. And then we are just learning, seeing what are the patterns. And uh, and then coaches like uh, Scott Cox, for instance, so who was also one of the early adopters, uh, he tried it. Actually, a, a coach from Austria uh, showed it to him in, I think, in a, and he was, uh, he, he, he told me that uh, what convinced him is that he, uh, tried a couple times and hit some good shots and some bad shots, and he immediately in the data saw the difference, what, what's happening in the good good swing and the bad swing, mm -hmm. and uh, it immediately kind of uh, clicked for him what, what he's doing and how you can change, let's say, different release and how it is reflected in the data, and uh, that was also very helpful. Uh, him and, of course, numerous other coaches like Brian Manzella, you mentioned, and Martin Chuck, and uh, and, and, and others uh, who are helping to, you know, uh, interpret the data and, uh, and popularize it among players. And, uh, and we, we really worked on uh, education uh, for uh, coaches and players because initially you get the data, but you're not maybe that, it's not immediately clear what to do with it, like what, are, what, what I should be looking at. And then uh, we started developing those patterns uh, that uh, uh, we, we identified. So broadly, like amateurs can do do a lot of bad things uh, and right. different kind of faults. But like when we look at the uh, good players, they really fall into certain uh, categories. Uh, and 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 seeing what type of release they have, uh, that was really helpful uh, uh, for for a lot of coaches who might not maybe spend that much time researching or maybe even not get access to all those tour players. And, and, and uh, they want to learn quickly. So th that was a really big thing. And all that information, of course, we made freely available on our website. Uh, so people can uh, learn about it. And actually, the education part was the really big thing that, uh, and we are still uh, working on that. Because if nobody knows about uh, how to use the product and what the good players are doing, then it's much less interesting. You need to find in the data, what are the patterns and uh, and present it in a clear way, what the good players are doing. So, you know, what, what, uh, what uh, you know, I should be aiming for. Yeah. It's like, what's the point of having all this data if you can't interpret it and, and use it in a beneficial way, right? Yeah, exactly. It's actually, if you look at the enterprises, uh, then they have a lot of like big data uh, or uh, so you, you can gather super like, tons of data but if you don't know what to do with it, it it's it, it's just garbage you need some mm -hmm. way to interpret it and 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 uh, we were very lucky that we got uh, working with uh, those brilliant coaches which uh, were actually they just wanted to work with us they want uh, of course uh, uh, we, we were not paying anything to them they just said like this is amazing and uh, we organized the, the PGA show in Orlando uh, just uh uh, just a seminar, which was a crowded room, and uh, we got all those coaches up there uh, speaking about what we what they found in the data, uh, what are the different patterns, what they recommend, and just this knowledge sharing and you know growing the community. That that, that was a huge boost for us, and 
I think word of mouth is really the almost only way to grow effectively. It's very hard to, you know, uh, uh, say grow in any other way. You just need to have uh, users that are uh, satisfied and that they recommend to other users uh, the product and uh, and they wanna uh, wanna educate other users maybe about even how to use that system, right? They say, hey, uh, you know, uh, I've had success with this one because uh, I, I've seen this data and you, you probably should learn it too. And obviously a huge boost for us has been that um, a lot of coaches are making YouTube videos nowadays. Uh, with uh, uh, instruction material. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not that they're trying to maybe just lock up that knowledge, but they want to make it uh, accessible. Uh, so uh, the biggest number of people might be interested in, in that and, and get access to it. And that, that has been also a huge boost for us. So any company that's uh, trying to do something uh, w new, uh, the, the, the big challenge really is just informing the world about uh, why it matters and uh, getting uh, your users to, uh, you know, recommend it to other users. Yeah. The, the fact that you guys grew organically and that it was people wanting to contribute because they believed in what you were doing and, and they saw the results is in the beginning, I would have to assume that, that it's a little more uh, slow growth, but once it finally catches on, it's exponential. Uh, and, and it's almost like you're trying to catch up or, or stay uh, current with, with the, the amount of growth you're having, it's like, okay, you go from how are we going to get more business to how do we handle all this business that's coming in? <laughs> so you go from one to one extreme to the other and it, it presents its own challenges unto itself. Yeah, de definitely. And uh, uh, what we're working on, of course, there's also a lot of interest from other sports as well. Uh, I guess we, we'll get to that maybe later. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, Coaches are looking uh, what what's uh, what are other coaches using? What are other players using? And uh, if you recommend it, then it grows naturally. You know, you, you had uh, touched briefly on on the, the the amateurs, and they're doing a lot of things in their swing versus the pros, and they're not doing as much. And, and from what I gathered in, in my talk with Scott, is you guys have really uh, identified a, a, is it two different release patterns for for for, for golfers. Uh, there, there's uh, maybe more than uh, uh, two main. There are two main ones, and there are some, let's say, uh, less popular ones. But mm -hmm. yeah, the two ones. Uh, uh, one is that more uh, what you'd call it. Uh, what Scott ca uh, calls actually the parrain a, which is more rotation release, which is this uh, turn down, uh, which like players like Tommy Fleetwood or uh, Torbjorn Olsen have. Uh, so. They release uh, the uh, the speed of the club head more uh, with the rotation and less with uh, changes in flexion extension, mm -hmm. and that's one type of pattern. And then the other is the what's quite becoming modern is the let's call it Dustin uh, Johnson pattern or uh, John Rahm, uh, Victor Hovland, Colin Morikawa. Uh, so uh, get, getting uh, more flexed at the top, so bowing the wrist, and then. Uh, releasing more uh, towards extension and having less rotation uh, in the wrist level, less supination. So we, we, let's dive into that a little because it, there's a number of coaches that, that I think listen, or at least I'm told that listen to the show. Um, the, the release w release A, what we'll call it, right? Um, <laughs> the Tommy Fleetwood, I think you guys had uh, Tigers in that category. Um, would that be more of a kind of uh, holding uh, off of a finish to, to where the, the lead wrist does not break down. It stays more flex through impact and beyond. Uh, it, it does extend, but it doesn't extend as fast maybe. Uh, so it, it's uh, slightly more. Yeah. But, but it's not, uh, you shouldn't mix it probably with this handle dragging or, uh, you know, uh, artificially not completely at all extended always does extend afterwards uh, but it, it just uh, it, it's primarily uh, more towards rotation like you can see just the rotation amounts are bigger mm -hmm. and it's uh, uh, extending slower so it's uh, yeah like like you said but it just uh, just to be sure you don't like you know hold off completely without uh, extending uh, at, at some point it's got to extend are you going to do some damage yeah. to your lead wrist 
Yeah, and you also lose uh, speed uh, if you, you know, uh, hold off too much, I think. H has there been any identification to what would lead a player towards, towards type A versus type B? Uh, could you repeat that? I is there anything that would identify a player as, as being more prone to be a, a type A pattern versus a type B pattern? Uh, yeah, so uh, it, it's primarily... Um, uh, you'd say probably it's more just naturally um, what you learn to do. I think the parent B is less, definitely less popular and you need to be rotating much more with your body. So if you're an older uh, golfer, uh, then probably that's not really uh, suitable for you. If you just physically cannot execute what, you know, Dustin Johnson is able uh, to execute, uh, then, then uh, you you'd naturally also uh, do of a more of a pattern A release, or uh, yeah, you release the speed more with rotation. So, so it, it so just to, so everybody understands, pattern A would be um, the hands are not going into uh, extension until later in in, uh, in the swing, and, and there's less body rotation. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So you release the speed, uh, like you don't get so bowed at the top. So like a typical more of a neutral position in the lead. Yeah, exactly. A new, more neutral position at the top. Uh, and then uh, you release the speed, uh, not so much, uh, let's say towards extension, mm -hmm. but you release it more with a, what you call supination of the lead uh, hand. So you more, you know, rotate. So they, this, like a nut, nut, knuckles down, I think Scott referred. Yeah, exactly. To. Like knuckle, old, knuckle. old school, like a Johnny Miller pattern yeah. uh, release. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, that's a better phrasing of that. The, 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 does that tend because obviously Tiger is who he is, and he's one of the best iron player probably in history. Tommy Fleetwood's obviously a phenomenal uh, iron player and ball striker. Do, do you guys see as you collect this data that that um, one pattern leads to to better ball striking, one might lead to, to some, uh, something else, or, or is it, no, it, it's, it's too finite, or, or there's nothing that, that stands out to say, well, if you do this one, you're, you're going to hit the ball more consistent or, or better, uh, or be like, one might be more consistent as a whole, one might be streakier, but the averages come out to something similar. Mm, I, I think uh, uh, Scott in the previous podcast, he had, he, he played, uh, put it in interestingly about the uh, short game that uh, some players who have more this pattern uh, B might struggle with the short game a bit because they don't control the loft uh, yes. that well uh, uh, of the club. Uh, so if you imagine that if you are uh, flexing and extending the wrist, then your loft also changes more. And for uh, it's harder maybe to be a good wedge player uh, if you have a too much uh, movement in, in that uh, uh, dimension. And I think he mentioned also uh, Victor Hovland uh, as a player who struggled a bit with maybe uh, some of his short game shots earlier, and mm -hmm. he needed adaptation that might be caused uh, by that uh, pattern as well of how his wrists move and how then the club face moves. It'd be very interesting to see DJ's numbers because he, he what he did, how he developed his wedge game to, to world class, and then he, you know, he went on that tear, uh, especially in being a type B pattern where he's flexed, but he still hits phenomenal wedges on on distance and distance control. But as you alluded to, is he gets around the green for the as phenomenal as all the other parts of his game are. Let, let's say he's in the top X percent on the in the world in, in driving and, and irons and, and wedge play. His, his chipping around the greens would not be, I, I would assume, not to that level because, as you mentioned, when you have a bowed or flexed lead wrist, it's much harder to control trajectory. Yeah. So, but but definitely, you know, there's, uh, it's very hard to make these big generalizations about there's so many players, but but yeah, those are things that uh, coaches have noticed. Uh, so. Uh, the, the, but yeah, you can definitely be a great uh, short game player also with uh, parent B, but, uh, but that's an interesting and, and also reasoning why, why it can be caused uh, by what your wrists are doing actually. Mm -hmm. So did, what, what were some of the, maybe the, the 
challenges and or successes as the product was being developed uh, that you guys maybe were didn't know and it, it was just new because it was something new and you were pioneers in, in this section of the industry? What, what, what were some of the things that came up that, that, that you were unaware of, but then you eventually overcame? Um, probably the big thing is about what we expected that it will be much clearer about what what's good and what's bad uh, right uh, immediately, that there's always this hope for some kind of gold standard, uh, you know, that you'll find and that will fit all the players. And you really, like with the hindsight, you know that it's not there, that not all the players are doing the same things, but, uh, but there's maybe a bit more hope initially that, you know, we'll just uh, find this one uh, magic thing or, or, or why a lot of um, golf products, when you just try to, to, to perfectly say that everybody should do exactly that one thing, uh, it fails, but when you understand that there are these patterns and then you identify the pattern and then you do the right thing for that pattern, then that makes sense. And uh, it's, it seems quite simple, but it's maybe initially we didn't uh, really expect that that, that would uh, be that way. And now let's say we talk about uh, in, in, in baseball with teams and uh, major league teams, and they are also asking like immediately, you know, what's the right uh, way, what have you identified? And it's also with baseball players, you know, like uh, I'm, I'm no expert in uh, the baseball swing, but it's clear that they're also doing uh, different things and it's not one thing. And, and a lot of coaches are just uh, also making, uh, you know, YouTube videos or, 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 or arguing that there's just this one thing that they've discovered that is the key to success and that they're, actually several of those things and uh, and there are several patterns and then you identify what's the pattern and the matchup and then you implement the thing then it will work but if you just try to you know put everybody in the same box for sure then uh, th th you're not going to be successful and you're actually going to confuse uh, people the, the, yeah the, the, that's what i think we're where the, the the mounds of technology and the data that all you guys are, are compiling and, and now that not even now, but you've already gone there where, where things are becoming more specialized per individual and matching up on how that person moves. Uh, they're, they're predetermined to move based off their physical structure. And now you're able to say, hey, here, here's what, what you are. Here's what you've been trying to do and why it may be wrong. I think if you try this or if you do this, then you're going to see the results that you've been looking for. And with the ability to measure and show them, no, you didn't do it enough. You need to do it X amount more. And okay, you got it. And, and look at, look at the result on that. I mean, it is pretty damn close to what you wanted, if not spot on it. it, it I think that's the biggest part of the te technological advancement and where it's going now is it's specialized, as you just said, uh, and people are starting to see the results much faster. Um, what, was there anything that surprised you guys uh, as you were going along in, in the learning curve of your, of your business? It was a lot of uh, surprises for sure. Thinking what are the, <laughs> <laughs> most fun, uh, fun ones to uh, share. I think, um, yeah, probably the fact that how many coaches are ready to, when you, um, if you deliver value, that people want to promote you and say good things about you. Uh, th that's, that's definitely a, uh, pleasant surprise because uh, you know you're thinking about what's what's your strategy of uh, you know should I be sitting down and just filming all the videos myself uh, about how to use it and and you you maybe don't imagine that hey if you just put it in the hands of the right people they're gonna you know help you to explain the benefits of of, of the product and the data and you don't actually need to you know uh, invest that much like we're not growing just because we are pour, pouring some kind of uh, uh, venture capital money in in, mm -hmm. in, in the company uh, and and uh, you know buying ambassadors like uh, uh, you know you d don't just pay tons of money to tour players to be on the face of your front page but uh, you're going more this uh, grassroots if maybe you can call it and 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 uh, 
letting people speak about uh, you and uh, growing through referrals. That, that's definitely a, has been a pleasant surprise and definitely go like a great strategy for growth. Well, yeah. And it gives much more credibility if you have somebody who's doing it um, because they believe in what you guys are doing and they believe in the product and they see the results as opposed to you paying somebody to say, hey, say these great things about us. Even if you don't know what the hell you're talking about, we're going to pay you to to make us look good. Uh, and I, I'm obviously in today's world, credibility and trustworthiness is, is something that's lacking. I think in as far as a, this, not to get off on a political rant, but the the leadership uh, is lacking in, in that no one believes in the trust of, of the of what they're doing anymore. And you you guys are doing, I think, it the, the correct way. Uh, again, I think it's a harder way in the beginning. It is you might be able to, to speak on where it's like, okay, we're, we're going to do this the right way, even if it's not the easiest road to take, but we want to do it right because we believe in what we're doing. And then you get more people that come to you, like these coaches who, who say, yeah, what they are doing is working and, and let me help you guys because I think it helps everybody else. I think it's a phenomenal way to do something. I think some of the best companies uh, in history are built that way, Apple being one of them. Uh, people wanted to go work for Apple. It wasn't like they had to recruit people. Um, and, and people seem to be doing the same with, with, with you guys, which is, uh, again, a great way to do it. Yeah, that's the, definitely. And you can't really fake it. Like you have to deliver the value to, uh, to, to get those people uh, to tell good things about you. Right. Uh, what, what were some of the things that, that you might, guys might have been sure of when you started? Now you look back and say, uh, yeah, we, that really changed our mind. Was there anything? Mm, I'd say maybe we were su slightly surprised about, we expected that uh, everybody will know immediately what good data looks like, what bad data looks like. But obviously, once you, if it's the first time uh, you see the data, uh, you don't know what's good and what's bad. So we initially maybe thought like uh, uh, somebody will just look at and say, hey, 20 degrees, that's uh, that's good. But obviously, insight, you know that nobody had seen that and no, nobody could tell you. Uh, so that, that was maybe slightly surprising. And then going into new sports, like let's say we would go in baseball, you also, you shouldn't expect, we shouldn't expect that uh, now all the teams are, uh, going to be immediately clear on what they need to do. They first need to do the research. They need to um, measure their players and find out those parents. And it takes a bit of time. It makes, takes uh, several years. Uh, and then you actually get to the right answers rather than uh, think maybe trying to get like, let's say, quick growth and say, okay, let's assume that 20 degrees is what everybody needs to be. And let's just push out the message because then you actually uh, going to, uh, find out that you know uh, it's it's actually not the range. There are several parents, and for each of them, you have that range that you need to get, and uh, and, and then it's much harder because you're already uh, out there with information that is uh, false. But uh, you try to maybe grow quicker uh, by you know cutting corners, and that doesn't mm -hmm. really work. No, and, and as I learn more about you, you, the the culture and the and the mantra of your company, I I guess with the podcast, I everyone I got started with that everyone said, "What the hell are you going to do a podcast for? You got enough things that you're doing." I said, "Well, one is I, through through my career, whether it was coaching or or teaching and playing or early on working at golf clubs, I got to meet a lot of very interesting people who had some very interesting stories or, or did very interesting things, uh, even if they weren't very well known." Um, and not now, as I go along with it, the whole idea is, is to put information out there that's either going to help somebody's game, uh, bring someone that, that might not be as well known, maybe to the to the golfing public as they are to the coaching industry. I, I think you guys have have crossed that just coaching and you're out there now with with, with golfers in general. Uh, but you, you guys helped me out a lot in that you shared numerous points of my show with Scott on. And I, I, I didn't count, but I know I got a lot of new followers because of that. So what I'm getting at is I, I, I thought of growing the show organically. I'm going to like, I'm going to put this out there. The idea is to help people. Hopefully it does. And then that will just spawn more people to like it. So I, I think we have that connection. Uh, and I was very, very grateful and appreciative that, that you guys shared that show so much and, and got me so many more 
followers and, and subscribers. I, I'm eternally grateful for that. Yeah, I think that it's 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 really about let's say also Scott goes on your show and he shares great information and uh, uh, you know and he doesn't ask anything for it that you just really those people actually who have that knowledge and uh, want to share it uh, they they kind of do it for free often and uh, you don't you can't really say if somebody goes to you and says yeah I'll go on your show and you know you'll pay me X amount for that. It's, it's probably not also going to be that great information. It's like, if you're, uh, of course, it's, it's fine if you are, you have information that you feel is like intellectual property, but nowadays, like the, the fact that you can share information freely and it naturally grows and people are looking for that information. It just mm-hmm. really helps your also, uh, 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 your, your company or yourself, uh, if you put out that information out there rather than trying to kind of have this, uh, more approach of uh, it's it's locked in, locked up and I'm not going to tell to anybody. Yeah, p- pay us X amount per month on a subscription and, and we'll slowly drip out the, our, our newest and latest and greatest. It's like, hey, we really want to help. And anybody, again, that goes to your website and it's hackmotion.com, um, the, the, one, once they start scrolling through and reading it and watching the videos, it, it's obvious that, that you guys are, are looking first and foremost to, to get to help people play better to hit it better, to have more fun, uh, all those things wrapped up in one. It, at least to me it was. Maybe to somebody else it might not be, but maybe they're not for Hack Motion either. <laughs> and maybe they're not for this podcast. But um, the, the people who do, that appreciate quality products, uh, the idea that we're, we, we want to help you improve, that, that they're going to gravitate towards that and, and they're really going to appreciate what you guys are doing. Um, some of the, we allude to some of the names and anyone that goes on your website can see all the, the coaches uh, that, that, that are, I guess you call them ambassadors. Is that, that a fair? You, you can call them, yeah, users. And users like all our users are our ambassadors, but of course, some of them are much more uh, noticeable than uh, others, uh, those who are working more on educating uh, other coaches. So yeah, we can call them ambassadors. What, what, what would, well, so you have a, a uh, 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 through, across Europe and the U.S., you have a number of very, very respected and knowledgeable coaches. Uh, you, you guys have gone from the development to the introductory stage to the growth stage, and, and so what would what would you guys see as your biggest challenge now in going forward? Well, what we actually now uh, are doing, we're working on making the product much, much easier to use for everyday golfers. So it started as this uh, sensor that gives you raw data. Then we are finding the ranges and the patterns. And now we are trying to make special modes and training modes uh, specifically for players. We actually just released uh, some of them, uh, just focus on one metric and uh, remove all the other data because like too much data can be actually confusing. Actually, that's one of the lessons. If you just get all the data, you don't know what exactly to focus on. Mm -hmm. So um, making really great user experience, just that uh, after each swing, you get exactly the right data. You understand exactly what it means and what you should be the next thing, uh, what you should change. And that's something that of course, allow us to be used by even more uh, players. Uh, let's say currently, if you buy it, you need to you know, sit down and think, okay, this is pattern. I need to be hitting it th- this way. And now with these new modes that we're releasing, it becomes much, much easier. But of course, the challenge there is that you continuously need to be improving it. The job is never done. Uh, so you continuously learning, okay, what are the challenges that we still need well what type of education materials we need to create uh that's probably number one challenge uh for us currently in in golf yeah would you i would have to think that the the model for that would be amazon and that that they have streamlined and made their process so efficient and so simple to use that uh that ease of use appealed to the masses and was probably one of the biggest reasons that they were able to, to grow so quickly and become the behemoth that they are. I would have to think that that, that would be uh, something that would be difficult. And how do you guys take all this data 
this technologically driven data and, and make it easy for somebody who would be uh, the way it was explained to me, like when I started doing videos, it's like you're, you're speaking way over our head. You have to basically explain it like you're talking to somebody who's eight years old. So you have to dumb it down from the, the ridiculously high level of information that you guys are computing and the algorithms and the, and the numbers and everything and cram that down. So it's, it's somebody can look at it and, and you give them the instructions, say, OK, if this is what you want to do, press this button and it takes them right to what they need to do. And it's an illustration of that. And then follow this in your game. You, you will get to the, this next level. And then when you get there, we're going to provide you with the next step. Um, that, that is, it's gotta be something that, that just uh, gets the mind working. <laughs> like you're, you're, you're constantly going into the person who is the novice and trying to look at it from their perspective, but you have to jump back into your position of the expert on all the technology and science behind it. That, that is a very, I, I would have to guess, um, difficult thing to do but i have no doubt given where you guys started and where you are now that, that you're gonna you're gonna solve that riddle yeah user experience is definitely a super important thing and it's just removing all the things and distractions which create friction and just really allowing the user to you know get the right information at the right time and uh removing all that uh extra stuff often it's the, the trick is not adding stuff sometimes but just uh taking it away to you know get get exactly the right information that the player needs mm -hmm. to perfect his swing is there a lot of trial and error involved in that a lot of alpha groups uh, uh yeah definitely it's just hypothesis about you know we have a feedback we have a guess and then uh, we have the special uh, user group that uh, is testing it, and then we listen to okay uh, to the feedback and uh, which parts maybe need to be improved. And we have a great software development team that can you know every week we are working on new features, releasing new features, experimenting with the design, uh, making it so it's, it's continuous improvement by just having hypotheses, testing them, and then uh, seeing if it's improvement or not. How do you guys as a company, as you grow, so usually when a company starts, the, the, the vision of, of what the company is and what it represents uh, is held by everybody in the company. And I think that the challenge that a lot of companies get into, be they usually small, and as they grow, is what they are and what they're becoming seem to have a divergence. So have you guys gotten to that level yet where it, part of your focus has to be on how we maintain uh, all the things that, that you talked about earlier, as far as what the company represents and not letting it have a, a divert, a divert onto a different path. Like maybe, um, I give an example. I, I had a, a, Randy Soma was a fortune 50 CEO. And he said, one of the things he sees in corporate America, at least in this country is the focus on stock prices and the unethical things that, that companies will do, for example, uh, cutting mass number of employees to, to save or to show a bigger profit so that their stock price can go up. I'm not saying you guys are, are doing anything like that, but in, in, in the early stages, cause you guys are, are what less than five years old, I think. Yeah. So, about that. Yeah. So, so you, you, you're getting, you, you've had the success and now you're going to, you're starting to grow and you're looking to grow more. Is there any thought given to how do we, it, we maintain what we are and we are not going to diverge from this no matter how difficult the road gets. And yeah, that might not be a golf related question, but just a curiosity question. Yeah, definitely company culture is super important. And I think what you refer to, like they often called vanity metrics, like uh, just uh, let's say number of followers. And, you know, if you want to get the most number of followers on Instagram, then you just put uh, like uh, some kind of uh, flashy things or whatever mm -hmm. attracts uh, attention, but those are not actually your you know, users and you're not going to grow your uh, company value uh, that, that way. So it might look good. And that's a problem actually for a lot of startup companies that, you know, you're playing just this pop popularity game initially that you try to get something happening and you might get uh, defocused uh, by maybe uh, participating in some kind of just competition to win some kind of prize, but it's not actually, you're not moving closer to, uh, what's referred to as, you know, product market fit, uh, that your, your product is actually 
uh, solving a problem for uh, for people. And if you don't listen to what your users are saying or your potential users are saying, you just uh, might get distracted by by these other metrics, which in, in social media, of course, are uh, you know visible uh, upfront, like just you have how many followers you have or or something like that, how many likes you get, but that's not actually uh, what creates value for the uh, for the company and for the users. Right, it gives a false sense of security maybe and that you think you're yeah, doing yeah. better than you actually are. It's like, well, let's focus on the important things and yeah, the other and, things will come. Yeah, and they spend money maybe boosting your posts to get more likes, but uh, if you don't have content that people uh, wanna watch uh, and spend time on, then uh, it's it's usual, you, you can't buy attention uh, that way. Mm-hmm. Not, not anything lasting. Yeah. You, you, you know, we had touched on you guys have uh, part of the company uh, is, is in, in other sports outside of golf. Can, can you speak to that a little bit? So we've got a lot of, we immediately got a lot of interest from other sports. Uh, and number one was uh, baseball. Like uh, uh, we sp- spoken to several M- MLB teams and uh, some are starting to use the sensor as well. And uh, definitely a lot of, uh, baseball teams are looking at what are uh, golf, uh, what's, what's happening in the golf industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, because golf industry is probably, I would guess, the m- almost most technologically advanced. And I, I think that uh, it's just explained by, you know, it's you, you're hitting the ball from a static position and there's, uh, you can't really say that it's athletic ability that completely decides it, uh, what, the result, because, you know, like, in basketball, it's very easy to say, like, I'm I'm not Michael Jordan. I'm not going to dunk it that way. But it's very hard for me to say, like, why, if I'm a fit guy, I couldn't uh, do, uh, like, a, a, a drive of 300 yards, right? It's, it's, it's completely physically possible while standing there. If I'm hitting a big slice, it's, it's not really my athletic ability. It's my technique. And uh, I, I can work on it. And there are certain patterns that the best players are doing. And if I learn it, then uh, I can learn to do that. And, uh, and that, that's why I think there's so much growth in technology because there's this uh, mystique uh, and this uh, what, what, what are the good players doing and trying to measure it better and better, right? Uh, with uh, video and with, uh, then, then with sensors, just seeing what exactly the good players are doing. And uh, you don't maybe have that much initially that in, let's say, NBA, because you just know like... Uh, Michael Jordan is much, much fitter than you, much taller than you. And, uh, you know, he's a freak of nature. So, well, of course, you're not, uh, not as good as him. And, uh, and uh, so uh, uh, that's why golf is so advanced uh, technologically, because it's just you, the ball. And uh, if you can't hit it, uh, then, then it's a problem of uh, your technique, most likely. And, uh, but our other coaches, uh, like in baseball, are looking at what golf is doing and learning. Uh, they're using more and more uh, launch monitors, uh, also mm-hmm. not just major league teams. Uh, and then uh, they, they're really interested in, uh, in, in what the hands and the wrists are doing and exactly what, how to you know, control the bat. So that, that, that's uh, one industry that we already entered and uh, we are offering it to baseball coaches. And then, uh, of course, other coaches from... Uh, NBA teams were approaching to us and for basketball. So what's the shooting motion and what the wrist is doing there? Uh, uh, tennis coaches, there's some bowling coaches that uh, a lot of these uh, sports actually have, uh, you, you know, this uh, wrist and hand motion that you need to learn. And uh, we've got a lot of interest there, but we're trying to be very focused on golf at the moment because we see that there's so much still to do. So we are uh, talking to coaches in those other sports, in baseball, we already have a sport, but our strategy is not to immediately, you know, release a product for each sport that might want it. We gonna do as much as we can in golf, grow it as much as we can there, and uh, mm-hmm. then do in parallel, uh, start doing it in parallel in other sports because you don't want to s- stretch your, you know, attention uh, too much as well. Yeah, that, that kind of gets to along the lines of what I was referring to earlier, and that you, you you start off with one thing, and then you, as you grow, you slowly start diverting in other directions, and pretty soon the, the whole the company as a whole has lost its way because you're scattered out. You, you can only take, and I would have to assume I don't run a company. I mean, it, it, the podcast, for example, it's myself, and there's an editor, and that's really about it, right? So I, I keep it. I'm production. I'm the vice president. I'm uh, uh, 
the grunt labor, I, I, you know, I do all those things. So if anything's wrong, I can yell at myself. Uh, so I don't have to deal with employees, but I have to imagine uh, that for, for getting people who, who are very, very good, like yourself and, and other employees in your company, or else you wouldn't have gotten to where you are. The, the challenge has to be, how do you keep those people from drifting to other technological companies, be they in, inside of golf or even outside of golf to, to where they're trying to pull them away from you because they're, they're good at what they do. Um, so yeah, that, that I'm, I'm glad you guys are, 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 are working through those things and, and staying to your roots. And I hope it continues. And then that you guys are the ones who are pulling people from technological companies into your company. <laughs> okay. You know, um, that, that it's interesting how you bring it up in baseball that there's a, a gentleman, uh, he's a hitting coach. Uh, I think he, he consults with Atlanta Braves. Uh, we're, we're just trying to work out schedules for him to come on. Uh, and I'll bring it up to him. Uh, and I'll, I'll get you guys connected if that's okay. Uh, I know he has an academy just outside of Atlanta or, or a coaching base uh, where he does uh, a lot with hitting to getting players how to get extra power and, and, and things like that. And I'm sure that he could benefit from some of the work that you guys are doing. And he's supposed to be a genius with it. Um, he's, he's under 30. I think he's 29 years old. And a lot of people refer connect that said, you got to talk to this guy. And so we did connect. And if, if I can do that for you guys, whether it works or not, at least it'd be somebody to talk to who's just a nerd when it comes to the mechanics and all those things as it relates to hitting. Sounds great. That would be awesome. Why do, is there any particular reason because you're in that industry that, that you think that the technology and the advancements in it really seem to start in the golf world and then gravitate or go uh, to other sports where they're not really starting in other sports and then coming into golf? Is there any particular reason this from somebody who's inside of that section of the, of the well as I sa said I think it's really that golf is it's very clear that it's about uh, not just athletic it's of course is athletic ability as well but it's uh, like a lot of the great players or oh, they're not that much uh, or, or in the older days they weren't that much fitter than uh, other guys and like very fit guys are not necessarily very good. Uh, right, and it's it's very clear that it it is down to uh, your technique uh, technique of how you you swing, and uh, and then I think also the lessons are uh, maybe it's just you and the ball, so you want continuous feedback. Uh, like when you are think playing maybe other sports, it's much more motion and 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 uh, maybe could be even more fun like when you're playing soccer or kind of more reactionary yeah exactly so like a golf lesson is just standing you your coach and you're hitting and then it's like what happened what did i do uh what do i change and it's uh, very easy then uh, uh if you couple that with it's clear that you didn't it's not that you know you can do it it's just you're not doing the right thing and then okay what should i be doing can you show me and then you start filming it and of course it helps very much that golf lessons are uh also paid uh coaches uh, are paid better probably than other coaches so mm -hmm. the less value is also obviously higher and then you also you, you have resources to invest in your lessons to be different from other coaches to offer a better service and it, it just uh, uh makes sense to invest in in yourself and your technology uh because you can earn it back and maybe in other sports where uh uh, lessons are less paid or, 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 or some other reasons than, you know, coaches have less incentive to really uh, invest in it. You know, it, and I, I bring it up because I had a, uh, a coach, uh, Gil Bosch. Uh, he is a coach in GOTA. Uh, it's a training system that stands for greatest of all time athletes. And as, as we were talking and learn more about how he came into that, I mean, he had back issues and was told he would never play golf again and he'd be lucky if he could walk and uh he went and, and did some physical therapy certifications and, and learned a lot about that he's very successful and, and smart entrepreneur uh but what he said really kicked it off was when he because he's a golf fanatic uh he, he took the v1 system uh, and the 4k resolution which really allowed him to slow down athletic movement and, and performance and motor patterns and really started seeing some similarities in uh, some of the greatest athletes that, that have walked on the planet from Pele to Roger Federer to Tom Brady and Michael Jordan, Serena Williams. And he started noticing certain patterns in there and it, it really helped him develop his system. And, and they're making some 
big stride just the same way you guys are. So it, it's cool to see golf contributing to the rest of the world uh, for, for, for the betterment of everybody. <laughs> you know, sure. um, a, a lot of things, especially in the technological world, seem the, the, the new advancements seem to come from the periphery. So is there anything that, that, that you see that you might have a theory on that, that that's going to be the, the next great thing that might just be lurking out there? Because it, it seems to be that when, when people focus on what they're developing at any particular given time, that, that there's something out there lurking that, that, that they just lose sight of, that they, they don't pay attention to. They're so involved in what they're doing. Is there anything that you see, or maybe you don't want to say, cause you've got it, you, you know, you're keeping your back pocket, you guys are going to release it, but, um, what, what do you see as being the next big thing, be it, be it for you guys or, or just in general? I would say probably really good feedback on what exactly you, uh, let's say more engaging lessons. Like I think a lot of uh, wearables and uh, sports wearables, they can tell you they deliver some type of data, uh, but they don't give you actionable uh, advice on what to do and then challenge you to do that. Uh, so let's say you, you get, uh, yeah. So, so basically in golf swing, you get, uh, uh, feedback and you get data, but the next step is of course, tell me, okay, uh, suggest me something to do and then challenge me maybe to do it. And then from lesson to lesson, like, uh, uh, get better on, on that, uh, kind of as a challenge mode. Uh, I, I, and that would really work on, on, on engagement. And that's actually something we are working on ourselves uh, to implement. So I, I find it myself super valuable in lessons that that's exactly how I train when I train with uh, my friend, let's say, and then, uh, you know, he, he makes a shot and then he challenges you to do that or you're mm -hmm. keeping a score, uh, like you go to a gym, like you did 20 push-ups, can you do 25, can you do 30? And that's exactly like this kind of a game, but not like a, no, this, sometimes there are these fake badges that you can sometimes just gather and it's, it's not really these game mechanics, but when you add really cool way to do it, that is really engaging, then you, it's even next level to getting the data, getting what is the correct pattern and then having this engagement to just continuously improve, like replicating what people are doing in those uh, great situations when they're challenging themselves, like, uh, you know, when you look at the top athletes, they often, they get into this kind of zone uh, themselves. I think uh, they often say that, you know, they don't leave the gym for hours just working on, on certain things and, and perfecting their, like in NBA players, just the shooting stroke and uh, they're obsessed with it, but they are, I think, obsessed in, 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 with it in their mind. They create this perfect game in which is kind of driving them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and like, I think a lot of average people, they just, especially nowadays with so much distraction around it on your, maybe uh, uh, there's so many distractors that you can't, you know, get this clear mind and get this focus on, 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 uh, on, on the goal and like every next step. Uh, th that's hard to do it yourself sometimes. And if, if the system can get you into that mindset of just, uh, you know, in the zone, correct, then it just, super much uh, helps for your improvement. I, I, I just find it myself, uh, when I was most progressing in my golf game, I was just like, you know, every lesson you're in the zone and just getting better. And you're just, uh, th there's this continuous loop of, you know, you know, you have your competition on the weekend, you, you need, you know what you need to work on. You, you, you kind of play, you, you find what, what didn't work, what worked, you immediately improve it. You know, you have your friends that you're competing against. And then, and, 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 and just the progress is so fast compared yeah, I, to when, yeah. And I think that starts uh, as kids where, where you, you usually see, and I was lucky enough to have the International Junior Golf Academy less than a mile from my house. My brother worked there, so I would see these kids all the time. And in their free time, they, they would go off with their friends, usually in a group of a couple of them, and, and they would challenge each other to, to hit these ridiculous shots, right? Like, there was one where, where they they went behind a tree and it required them to hit like this 40 to 50 yard slice around the tree and onto the green or, or they would pick the most ridiculous spot to hit a, a flop shot from and so you could get closer to the hole 
I think that's kind of where that starts. It's just kids being curious and challenging themselves. And then as you alluded to, okay, then it starts to progress to, okay, what do I need to do as, as I want to develop and get to that next level? Um, what, what do I need to improve on? And then let me go work on that because that's going to help me have a, a, a better uh, result in the next tournament. And it just snowballs from there to, the, as you mentioned, that the pros want to have that idea of the perfect game in their head. And it's like when they go to the gym for hours or they go to the golf course for hours, they just get lost in what they're doing. And, and they're learning yeah, ways exactly. to solve problems, right? Whatever the problem is, if it's a, if it's a mechanical issue, if, if it's a, a wrist issue, um, feet, whatever it is, uh, that they're learning that how, to, how to do that. And then when the game time comes, I mean, is it, is it any coincidence that, that some of the best quarterbacks of all time, you got Tom Brady, who was, had one of the worst combine scores in history, and he went in, what, the eighth round. Uh, you have Steve Young, who sat in college behind Jim McMahon for three years, and then he got to be the starter, and then he goes to, to San Francisco, and he has to sit behind Joe Montana. But he kept working and working and working and improving. And, and these people who, who overcome these challenges and solve these problems, they do it for so long that by the time they get to the spotlight, they're so well-groomed in it. Uh, obviously, Tiger in, in the golfing world was second to none. It didn't matter how accomplished he was. He kept going back to that. OK, it's 2022 season starting next month. I'm starting from zero again. Doesn't matter that I won 14 or 15 majors. Now I got to start from zero. And that ability to, to mentally say that this doesn't matter anymore. I'm starting from from ground the same level everybody else is. Uh, is yeah, I, I see exactly what you're saying. I, I don't think it's become uh, anywhere near mainstream, but I think it damn well should be. I think that there's a few people talking yeah, if, about it, if you, right? Go go ahead. No, if you can build, yeah, if you can build any kind of uh, uh, system that helps you to get into that zone and stimulates you, nudges towards uh, setting those goals and getting in the right mindset, then it's just. Uh, can be so so helpful and uh, unfortunately not everybody has it naturally but if you can you know steer people in the right direction and we're we are trying to do that with our product uh getting to that uh, point then the the progress can be huge for anybody but let me ask you it, it's times kind of winding down for us you guys have, you offer multiple products right that there's the light version if i'm not mistaken yeah and then there's the advanced version can you speak to those so in uh, people, when they go to your website, they have a better understanding in their own mind of what they might want to, to learn more about and purchase from you guys, or at least get with somebody who has access to, to your device. So the hardware is the same, and the difference is in the software and what the type of data you get access to. And uh, what we call the full system, uh, that version has uh, all the graphs which show detailed motion uh, at uh, 100 hertz, so each moment of the swing, and it has uh, extended uh, tour player library, and uh, so it has basically more data and more detailed uh, data. And then the light version is more uh, toward like it's the goal is for more players and uh, to to buy it and use it, and that's uh, giving you the main positions. So, and the main metrics, uh, but they don't give it the, the metrics at such granularity and uh, 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 there's a l less tour date examples. So one is kind of the more pro version, the full system, and the other is more uh, aimed at players. So the, the, the player, I mean, the, the full version would be, let's say for gravitate towards coaches. And, yeah. and the, the, the light version, I think you guys call it on the website, it would be more for yeah. if, uh, Joe Smith at, at a XYZ club wanted to, to go from a 10 handicap down to a single digit handicap. He, he, he would be able to utilize that on his own. Yeah. And uh, you can always upgrade. So you start with less data. You can understand that data and then upgrade. If you feel that I'm, I'm really enjoying this, I want to upgrade to the full version and then you get access to more detailed data. Because basically the coaches, they just want to often see uh, all the details and their uh, uh, well, well, players maybe don't have that much time, so they say, "Okay, I'm I'm fine with just seeing these uh, main metrics and these main positions, and that's enough for me to improve." Mm -hmm. And I'm not do that much, just sitting down and doing in-depth analysis. 
Yeah, I, I know J- Jason Sutton is, is uh, one of the coaches on your side. And, and Jason was on the show, and he works at Carlton River, which is about four miles from my house. I'm going to bug the hell out of him to go play with his hack motions <laughs> see what kind of data I, I've got all messed up. Um, see if he can help me with that. <laughs> yeah. um, you want to jump into some rapid fire and, and get you on your way? I know you, you're, you're getting probably close to, to supper time, and I'm getting close to lunchtime. I don't, I don't want to invade, and, uh, but I still want to uh, knock out a couple more things. So if you're, if you're cool with it, I do an emer- emergency nine, I call it. It's rapid fire. Sure. Uh, always do it with all the guests. So, uh, with the uh, as we alluded to earlier, the Ryder Cup's coming up in a few weeks. If you were to make the Ryder Cup team, and they have that walk-up song now to the first tee box, and especially this year at Whistling Straits, I don't know if you've seen the pictures yet of the grandstands, but I mean, they're going to have something like fifteen thousand people surrounding the first tee, and you know they're going to be packed and full of people, maybe slightly intoxicated. <laughs> but if you were to your your uh, walk-up song. What would be your walk-up song to the, in the Ryder Cup? It's, it's tough. I think it would be my Stairway to Heaven, probably. All right, cool. That, that's a cool song. Um, if you were to go into a casino, uh, what would be your go-to game of choice? Honestly, I'm not a big fan of casinos, so I uh, can't answer that. Okay, no, no problem. Uh, when you're playing golf, what's your go-to drink? Uh, water, just pure water. No, no, no getting dehydrated. Eh? No, no, no. <laughs> um, if you could buy stock in any golfer over the next five years, who would it be? I think John Rahm. Yeah, he's trending pretty good, isn't he? Yeah. Um, let's see. Caddyshack, Tin Cup, or Happy Gilmore? Probably Caddyshack. I, I, <laughs> I really like Bill Murray. <laughs> the classic yeah exactly uh, a couple more um best course you ever played i think it was uh probably royal adelaide uh in in australia that was uh great in the world uh team championship uh that was a great course mm-hmm. um since you're a tech guy if you could play any video game for the rest of your life, what would it be? That's tough, actually. Um, I think I, I grew up playing Need for Speed, so I probably I, I would play a racing game, yeah, like that. All right, cool. Uh, most used app on your phone? Unfortunately, my email. Well, actually, now, no, time-wise, it would be podcasting now. So, uh, uh, yeah, my podcast app. Cool. Uh, you, you know, you would think that would be my, I probably need to have a podcast app. Uh, well, I, I do listen to when I go to work out, and, and that's kind of yeah. how I stay current on who to. Yeah, email has the mo- most opens, but uh, lengthwise, it would be po- podcasting. Cool. And, and in your opinion, uh, greatest golfer of all time? Probably Tiger. Doing it that at such competition and uh, you know elevating the game, but mm-hmm. probably Tiger. It, it, it's it, it's a it's a no lose answer on that one. I think Tiger's probably got a little bit of the edge. You're you're the fifty first show, so you might uh, have swung it twenty six to to twenty four. But uh, I, I don't think there's a wrong answer in that one, when, especially when it comes down to Tiger and Jack. All right, yeah. Reinhold. Hey, I, I'm greatly appreciative that, that you took the time to come on. It's been fun. I learned a whole bunch more about hack motion. I, I knew a little bit about it after again, talk, you know, having Jason nearby and talking to Scott and I look forward to, to getting on there and, and using it. And I hope more people who listen to this will, will take that opportunity to do the same. And uh, I know you guys given the way you run your company and, and come up with products and, and the whole culture, I know it's going to continue to be very, very successful and, and help people, uh, improve their games in so many ways yeah it's gr- great coming on the podcast and just uh happy to be here so thanks a lot for inviting awesome well, you have a great night and uh, i'll be in touch soon all right everybody thank you so much for listening to today's show if you enjoyed it you can find more information on today's episode and other topics at golf 360.blog 
There you'll find the show notes and links, links related to this episode, as well as any other episode that we've done so far to date. If you're interested in improving your game and would like to learn more from yours truly by taking a private lesson, a half day or multi-day school, club or putter fitting, you can reach me through the blog site or by email pete at golf360.blog. So some of you may be asking, what is the golf paradigm? All you have to do is click on the homepage while on my blog site to discover how you can start playing better than you ever thought possible. Or you can simply sign up again on the blog page for my instructional videos where I give regular tips on all areas of the game to include the swing, club design and fitting, health, fitness and nutrition, the mental aspects, and equally as important, the integration of all those things together. I'm also on social media and you can find me at The Golf Paradigm, that's P-A-R-A-D-I-G-M, and I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, also under the same name, The Golf Paradigm. Facebook is usually the best way to reach me for questions and or comments, and I look forward to hearing what all of you have to say. This podcast is brought to you in part by Old South Golf Links. A short ride across a bridge from Hilton Head Island is one of the area's finest golf courses and a hidden treasure. Set up on towering pines and ancient oaks with sweeping march vistas, truly makes Old South Golf Links a one-of-a-kind golfing experience. The Clyde Johnson design was named one of the top 10 new public courses when it opened, and it also takes full advantage of the natural beauty of the low country. Old South is a fun and unique challenge for golfers of every skill level and a favorite of both locals and visitors. Whether it's your first time here or you're a regular, you'll be treated and feel like family. From the bag drop to check-in at the fully stocked pro shop with both men's and women's apparel, to breakfast or lunch before or after your round, the staff is always ready and willing to help. Experience for yourself why Old South is one of the premier golf courses in the Hilton Head area and why it will quickly become a favorite of yours too. Visit them in person or online at www.oldsouthgolf.com or to make it tea time, simply call the pro shop at 843-785-5353.